let's pretend that this is wheat and we can do something we can process the wheat or do it into some function that turns it into flour so we're moving from wheat to flour what can i do with the flour hmm I could take the wheat that was turned into the flour and turn it into bread. So notice that I take one input, turn it into an output, and then that output, I take it and turn it into another output. This is what we call a composite function using the output of one function as the input in another function. It's a combination of functions. Let's look at how this works in mathematics. Given that the function f is equal to 2x minus 1 and the function g of x is equal to 3x plus 1, determine f of g of x and this is how we represent a composite function so what this means is we're going to take the function g and we're going to and we're going to put it inside the function f so the host function or the main function is f but we're putting g of x inside of it and how I like to do this is to start with the main function, which is the one that comes out first. So I'm going to rewrite f of x as 2x minus 1. And now remember, I'm going to put in the function g inside the host function f. So wherever I see x, I'm going to put the function g of x in there. All right. So this is the function g of x and I'm going to take g of x and replace x with it. So this is where x is in the function f and I'm going to put g of x right there showing that I'm making a composite function by inserting one function into another. So here I'm going to put g of x which is 3x plus 1. And when I'm substituting, I'm going to be using my brackets. Then I'm going to put whatever I did in trouble, like that 2. I didn't trouble the 2, so I'm going to put it back. And I have this minus 1 on the outside. And once you can do this, it's easy from here. So this will become f of g of x. Notice that the function g, which is 3x plus 1, is inside the function f which is 2x minus 1 so all we have to do now is to expand the brackets so we'll have 2 times 3x and that will give us 6x and we'll have 2 times this positive 1 that will give us a positive 2 remember too that we'll have this minus 1 on the outside so I have to put it back now I can group the like terms so there's no like terms to 6x, so we'll leave the 6x. But if I have 2 and I take away 1, I'm going to be left with a positive 1. So f of g of x will give us 6x plus 1. So when I use the output of g of x as an input for f of x, I end up with 6x plus 1. Simple, don't it? Let's try another one. We just did f of g of x. What if we had g of f of x? The host function is now the function at the front, which is g. So I'm going to take f of x this time and substitute it inside the function g. So I'm going to start off with the host function, which is the g. And looking at the notes, g of x is 3x plus 1. 
So I'm going to start off with g of x, which is equal to 3x plus 1. And now I'm going to substitute f of x, the whole function, inside g where there's x. So let's look back at f of x. f of x was 2x minus 1. So where if I see x, I'm going to input the function 2x minus 1. And because I'm substituting, I will be using those brackets. And everything around it, I'm going to put it back. So all I have to do now is to expand those brackets. So 3 times 2x will give us 6x. 3 times negative 1 will give us negative 3. And we'll have this plus 1 on the outside. So we're grouping the like terms now. So we'll have 6x. And minus 3 plus 1 will give us negative 2. So g of f of x. The composite function is going to be equal to 6x minus 2. Now I want you to pay close attention to something. This is what g of f of x is. And this is what f of g of x is. Are they the same thing? So does the order in which we combine the functions matter? I'm leaving you to figure that one out.